This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. Uh, they are located in Perrysburg, Ohio. Fair Trade Certified, USD Organic, and Integrity is their core value. Import they import coffee beans from all across the all across the globe. Excuse me, uh, from places such as Brazil, Colombia, Honduras, and Peru, and and other far off lands. Coffees come in K cup. Gift cards available and free shipping over fifty dollars. Be sure to. Check out their website, ironbeancoffee.com for more information and to check out all their delicious coffees that they have to offer. Iron Bean Coffee Company, where they are America's local coffee roaster. No, sir, we'll do shenanigans after we do recruiting. There's no, there's no recovering from the shenanigans episode. And for those of you uh, listening on the youtube portion or in the secret the super secret youtube people listening to the super secret youtube part of the show uh shenanigans is our sloopcast only patreon episode which is which is a favorite among the sloopcats for sure yes it is it's technically called sloopcats only that's technically the name of it however uh, we all call it shenanigans because that's a that's a good descriptor of what it is. But Kyle, first we're gonna do some. Uh, this is our first ever Buckeye Building Blocks episode, Kyle. So I'm excited. Let's get started. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Well, I, I already peaked the microphone, so that's a thing. <laughs> I, I I hit that. I hit the. Uh, I hit the intro a little hard there. I already peaked the microphone. Oh well, I'll fix it in post. I will fix it in post, Kyle. Kyle, this is our first ever Buckeye Building Blocks episode, which. Um, it looks like Gangland is already referring to his Buckeye Legos. And then I am not going to read what Stuart said in response. Um, the <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, This is our recruiting show. This is our recruiting show. Uh, it's, it is the foundation, is the building blocks of the program, hence the Buckeye building blocks. That, you know, I love alliteration, so here we are. Uh, Ohio State, Kyle, been, been a bit busy since our last, I would say, formal our last formal recruiting episode, uh, we, we've talked about all of these individuals joining the class at one point or another uh, throughout the, the last couple of weeks. But we sort of wanted to, to to sit down and do a bit of a post early signing day recruiting catch up. Is that does that sound like okay. a good way of doing it? Sure. Sure. Yeah. A lot, lot, lot of information's has happened since the last time we talked so let's let's jump right into it jared by the way uh let's, let's yeah let's let's actually start with the question from our live chat stewart says let's talk combs is he back this is a recruiting question when it comes to aj harris i do not i do not expect Kerry combs to still be on the staff uh that's there, that's 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 me saying it plainly. I do not expect, I do not expect Kerry Combs to still be on the Ohio State football staff. Period. Uh, so yeah, that's that's just that's just me putting that out there. How does that affect AJ Harris? That's yet to be seen. We'll see. Like we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. But so, um, so how's that, how's that going to affect the recruiting class as well as like Combs is an elite recruiter of defensive year, backs. Coach next year. Combs is an elite recruiter of defensive backs, period. That's you're you're going to have you're going to have issues um, depending upon. But of course, like I said, or obviously, right, it depends upon who you you bring in. Right. 
hopefully maybe the next guy that comes in to replace him is also an elite recruiter of defensive backs because you're Ohio State, damn it. Uh, Stewart says, are we going to have to recruit the portal for corners? No, I, I love where Ohio State's corners are at right now. I love Ohio State's corners. Just need to stay right healthy. Now. Just need to stay healthy. Yeah, no, I, I think Ohio State has plenty of talent at corner right now. That That is not a concern for me. Um, Ohio State, from a talent perspective, it's is set at corner for the next two, maybe three years. I, I firmly believe that. Um, now, that third year gets a little sketchy if you don't if you're not still recruiting, and that fourth year goes to hell if you're not still recruiting. But uh, Ohio State is 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 in great shape as far as talent in the uh, cornerback room. In the coming year without Combs. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Denzel Burke, Cam Brown, th- those are your those are your two dudes right there. I'm and I'm fine with that. That doesn't even you know, I, I think we started to see young guys come and uh yeah, there there are always gonna be misses. Yeah, Martinez is another one who I think was coming on late. And there there's lots of young corners on the on the team. The the this last recruiting class was insane. Wait till you start to see more of those guys start to get on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I, Ohio what, State's that's... good from a talent perspective at corner. They need to develop those guys. Mm-hmm. And then let's not forget about like the safeties, like the injuries that Ohio State had last year. And then you're bringing on a very, very talented safety in um, Sony Styles too. It's I, I'm really excited to see this um, defensive back group next year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's it's it's I, I I like this I like the secondary a lot, and I say secondary, and I say secondary because I'm including the safeties. Adding Josh Proctor back will be huge. Young guys coming up will be huge. Ohio State, Kyle. Let's get into the recruiting talk. Uh, and let's start off the recruiting talk by talking about recruiting the transfer portal. Ohio State adds Tanner McAllister. Uh, this is a fifth, potentially sixth. I'm not, let's see, what, what recruiting? Yeah, the uh, 2018 recruiting class. Uh, he uh, is using in a, his uh, COVID year. <laughs> Kabuto, why do you always welcome yourself? I'm for it, by the way. I'm for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tanner McAllister uh, is a veteran of the Oklahoma State defense. So, you know, whether he starts or not, whether, you know, and I, I expect him to contribute a lot on the field. Because he he, uh, he plays both safeties very well. He can play that cover safety or he can play that deep safety. He can do both. Get you a guy who can do both. And... Again, he actually knows Jim Knowles' defense, so as far as a veteran guy, he's going to come in and he's going to you know, do that quarterback of the defense, coach on the field, all those cliches, can come in and be those guys. You know, yeah. lots of young safeties, you know, the bullet position, like which which one of those guys goes back to bullet and, and – and, or from the bullet, which one of those guys get back into the cover safety, which guys move up into linebacker, you know, exactly who is available at safety right now is not completely clear. Mm -hmm. No, and Caputo guys makes a good point as well too. Like it's, they, the, the talents there right now, um, it's, they got it. They got to show it this year. You, You got it. You have a, you have an actual defensive coordinator, this year now we're going to have all of winter spring what what jared could be his last comment <laughs> <laughs> it, you, you got a, your defensive corner you got all year to, to to get everything put into place and ready for for the 2022 season like this is it's it's put up or shut up year now for the defense. Absolutely. But, you know, again, if we're talking about the defensive backs, Proctor's already shown it to me. Cam Brown's already shown it to me. 
Denzel Burke's already shown it to me. There's a lot of put up or shut up in the linebacker room. I'll tell you that much. There's a lot of put up or shut up along the defensive line. I'm not worried as about the corners, especially about Josh Proctor, especially not worried about it, but Kyle, uh, since we're talking transfers and since we're talking linebackers, uh, let's, let's talk about DeMonte chip train him. Uh, he is a Ohio kid, Kyle coming back home yeah, from- after two years in Arizona. Yeah, from from Akron. Uh, yeah, he's been in Arizona State for the past two years. Um, I, I thought he did pretty well those two years. Um, this year he got into some fumble issues, kind of put him onto the sideline the second half of this year. But when he's on the field, he he averaged more than five yards a carry as a running back. But but coming to Ohio State, he's going to see the other side. Looks like he's going to see the other side of the field there, and that at linebacker. Yeah, gonna try uh, to, one of the going to try to do a uh, steel chambers type of move. Yeah. He's he's going to pull a steel chambers. Uh, yeah, he's moving to linebacker. One of the reasons why he committed to Arizona State and not Ohio State to begin with was that Ohio State wanted him at linebacker. He's an first team all state Ohio linebacker. Played linebacker and running back very well. Wanted to play running back in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's apparently changed his mind and he's coming home. That's yeah. that. That's the story. Now, is it the fumbling issues? Is it a, just a change of heart? Um, he says, he said in a couple different interviews, the reasons why he's coming to Ohio state is quote, I want to play for championships period. There you go. If you want to play for champions, kids, Hey kids, I don't know if any recruits watch this show. Here we go. Here we go. Kids. If you want to play for a national title, do not go to the Pac-12. <laughs> Anywhere in the Pac-12. Oh, but Jared, USC and da, 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 I don't care. Oh, I, I don't th- I you care. Going somewhere else with that. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. Oh. Oh, I'm not even gonna try and guess. A, cer- a certain new, a certain new coach saying about, oh, come here for championships. Uh, if you're referring to something that happened during the national title game, I am completely no. clueless. No, no, this was this was about a week ago. Freeman. Oh, I, I listen, Ohio State fans. <laughs> can can we talk? Now I'm talking to Ohio State fans. Can you can y'all can y'all back off of Freeman? Oh, uh, he said coming to Ohio State was a mistake, and he did the yeah. You know. You know, Ohio State and, and Notre Dame are playing week one, right? Like, he, what, what is he supposed to do? Oh, man, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Well, here, here's an interesting I, thing. I'm glad that. I chose Notre Dame this time. I wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. Wait, He's here, in the middle the inter- of how many recruiting battles, both now and in the future, with Ohio State? What, what do you want no. him to do? To go into no. the press conference and say, oh, man. Not, God, not I'm just glad recru- I picked Ohio State. <laughs> not just recruiting, but also, but also with coaches too. Like they were, they were hard trying to get a couple of Ohio State coaches coming over to Notre Dame too. So, all, all, so what? Brian Hartline got a raise. <laughs> yeah, that, that's 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 why Hartline is staying at. Well, not the reason, but that's a reason why why Hart Hartline is staying at Ohio State. I, I, listen, I, I, I don't know. I, I think he would have stayed regardless, but he also didn't turn down the raise in the, in the big fancy title. <laughs> yeah. So, who, would? who would? Yeah, no, uh, exactly. Uh, cause I mean, yeah, um, yeah so, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's in his plan to be the, the next offensive coordinator at Ohio state. Yeah. So going back to, uh, DeMonte chip, uh, train him though. So, um, Ohio kid going over to linebacker with, what do you expect? What do you expect out of him coming, coming over to Ohio State now? Well, I, he's never played linebacker in college before, so this year, not a lot. I, 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 he's he's only two years in. One of those years was a COVID year, so he's only used up one year of eligibility. He 
could, in theory, redshirt this year. You know, you just sort of get him in there, get him. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but in theory, he could. 20, you know, he has four years, potentially four, more likely three. Again, depending upon if he redshirts or not, years of eligibility left. Mm -hmm. Right away, not a lot. Right away, not a lot. Special teams player um, might get in. Um, good depth player, uh, incredibly athletic, very talented. It just sort of depends upon how how quick he can get going at the linebacker position. Might be more mm -hmm. of a next year look. Might be more of a next not uh, a twenty twenty three look. Might be more of a twenty twenty three look for Ohio State at linebacker. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. Um. <clears throat> But before before we go into um, talking about the recent uh, commits for Ohio State, Jerry, let's do a quick ad break and hear from some of the delicious coffee beans over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Let's talk about the coffee, Kyle. Have we have we talked about the flavored coffees recently? I'm going to say I'm... no. Let's talk about the flavored coffees. Well, I want to let you know the Mom's Carrot Cake is currently sold out. Guys, you got to buy these coffees. Don't wait around. Don't wait around. Stuff goes, stuff goes and it's gone. Stuff goes and then it's gone. First it goes, then it's gone. Quit, quit screwing around. Hey, quit screwing around and buy some coffee. It's a veteran owned coffee company. Um, Kyle said all that stuff at the beginning. It's an Ohio company. Integrity, core value of what they do and all that stuff, right? Um, let's see. They're having a sale. Let's see. What, what do we got on sale? Um... All three of their, they do have K-Cups, uh, three of their flavors available in K-Cup, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, the Fierce, and the Ride or Die, all three of those available in K-Cup, and all currently on sale, save $2 uh, per order. Uh, let's see, what else is on sale? Our Nordic Trio, our Thor, our Loki, and our Odin, all three on sale. Uh, the Fear No Evil, the Darker Than Dark, the Black Roast Coffee, currently on sale uh let's see what else we got here the drink from the skull of your enemy uh it's a it's a maybe maybe my favorite dark roast maybe my favorite dark roast uh drink from the skull of your enemy currently two dollars off on sale uh the integrity the the core coffee the flagship coffee of the iron bean coffee company currently on sale uh the cast iron which is, I'm going to say, one of my two favorite medium roast coffees. I can't choose. It's one or it's the other. I'm not going to tell you what the other one is right now. Because the cast iron is currently on sale. You can save $2 on a bag of, a bag of cast iron. So, uh, you can find those coffees and a bunch more coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. We got a trio of commitments we got to talk about, Jared. So let's, some of them I think we might have mentioned briefly, but we're going to go more in depth about them. So let's start with Amari Abor, the uh, the defensive end out of Texas. This is a, this is a big, get, big get for Ohio State. It's somebody we, we talked about, especially right. in December with the, uh, the early recruiting time. Didn't didn't sign then, but now he's hard committed to Ohio State right now. He is ranked 38th in the 24/7 composite, fourth best edge player in this uh, 2022 class. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is a much needed edge rusher out of this class. Uh, I, I he's someone we've been watching this entire cycle. This entire cycle. Um, Ohio State was having trouble getting some edge rushers in this class, which I think is a thing that happens when you sign uh, two top five players in the country, both at defensive end from the previous class. It makes it a little bit hard. I think it's actually a huge achievement to get a guy who's a top 40 player. This guy's just, and I mean just outside of being a five star, he's an incredibly high four star player. Great edge rusher, 6'4", 240 from Duncanville, Texas. Ohio State b beats out all the big boys for this one. Uh, Alabama, especially. Oklahoma was in it for a while, but 
the whole Oklahoma thing fell apart for reasons everyone's aware of. Uh, so, yeah, a huge, huge get for Ohio State. Um, sort of an eventful recruiting situation. Uh, when we did our when we did our uh, early signing day review a few weeks back, um, I named three guys, three guys to keep an eye on. Amari Abor was one of them. I told you, hey, I feel really good about this. You don't have to worry too much. I feel really good that that, that Abor will be joining the class. And guess what, Kyle? He has. Amari Abor joins the Ohio State recruiting class on January 2nd. And uh, Kyle, that's that's number one. We got two more to go. Yeah, and then a couple of days later, we got um, Carson Hinsman. We put Carlos here. It's actually Carson. <laughs> that's a mistake I would expect you to make for reasons we aren't going to talk about. Uh, Carson Hinsman. I'm gonna, by the uh, way, I'm is... going to, for the record, I'm going to blame autocorrect on that. All right. <laughs> um, he, he's that interior lineman we talked about from the state of Wisconsin. Like, who goes into Wisconsin and takes a lineman out of that right. state? <laughs> uh, it, it feels it feels like one hell of an achievement for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's uh, he's the sixth interior lineman um, from the 2022 class. Gangland. Apparently, we do <laughs> definitely a position that Ohio State's in need of, uh, I know Ohio State always had these good tackles, but needed that guard uh, right. position. And I think that's what uh, Carson ha- is here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, yeah, it's still, it, honestly, it's still a little bit puzzling. Uh, when we told you again, during our, our, our previous recruiting episode, during our National Signing Day review episode, Wow, really, ex- really, Esquire. Esquire says we made him a Gouda offer. That that doesn't even work. That's <laughs> terrible. That's not even good. Terrible. That's just terrible. Terrible. Uh, yeah. Uh, we gave you again. We gave you three names. One of the names, Amari Abor. Uh, one of the, the other names was Carson Hinsman. Now. We told you two of these guys we feel real good about. We feel real good about two of these guys. This third guy, we're not sure. Trying to go into Wisconsin, trying to go into the heart of cheese country and stealing an offensive lineman from the Badgers? Are you kidding? But they did it. They They absolutely did it. Um, He's a uh, 134 nationally, uh, just outside the top five for interior offensive linemen in this class and Kyle, the number two player out of the state of the Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really, really looking forward to seeing what, what uh, Carson can do with the, with the Buckeyes moving forward. Yeah. And it was a not, not again, Ohio state made a change at offensive line coach uh, for a reason uh, because this offensive line class is not what we had hoped it would be. Uh, a few, a few big misses along the offensive line. Um, Ohio State takes a project player or two in this offensive line class. Again, Ohio State makes a makes a change at offensive line coach for a reason. So to get Carson Hinsman, a guy who you do not expect to get, uh, an incredibly talented guy. Again. Um, really uh, a, a pretty high four star, you know, not too far outside the top 100 players overall. That that's, that's a much needed injection into a lackluster offensive line class. Uh, yep. Huge get for Ohio state. Absolutely enormous. Uh, Hinsman, uh, enormous get for Ohio state could, could be playing earlier than expected. Yep. And then the last guy here, um, Hero Kanyu, love the name there. Hero Kanyu, um, kid out of California, uh, plays defensive line just outside of the top 100 nationally for the 2022 class and is 18th uh, best defensive lineman in this class. Kyle? Yes, Jay. Canoe. canoe. I know you like you don't want to say canoe. Like it's like the boat, but it's it literally is just pronounced like the boat. 
Okay. Hero canoe. Yeah. It's it, it's it's a, he's a very heroic canoe. Okay. That's it's, it's what it is. Uh yeah, uh, he, another I got I feel like by the way, uh Stewart says you misspoke all swings and misses on the big recruits. Uh yeah, I don't know. I I I must have said something wrong. Uh if uh if Stewart says I misspoke, I misspoke. So, but yeah, it was it was not a, it was not a great oh, offensive line recruiting class. Uh, the defensive line recruiting class felt uh, slow in starting, but finished strong here, not just with Amari Abor, but with Hero Canoe. Um, again, just outside the top 100 player, uh, probably a defensive tackle, almost certainly a defensive tackle, uh, 6'5", just under 300 pounds, very athletic, very athletic so the the question sort of becomes, is he a nose tackle? Is he uh, more your your three tech defensive tackle? Uh, that's that's yet to be seen. Uh, Sewer says no O line. What are you talking about? I'm very con- Stewart. Stewart, you're confusing me. I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah. Uh, you are behind. I have a very nice ass. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> oh, Jared. So so with these with these three here. I had to take means... the offensive against Stewart. I had to take the offensive. The uh... <laughs> yeah, it's already moved on to the shenanigans. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Ohio State's Ohio State maintains their their fourth spot in the in the team rankings. No way they move up um, to uh, third or even second. Like you can forget about first too, because Texas A&M just has way too many recruits in this in this class here. Yeah, got to do something with all that oil money, Kyle. Got to do something mm-hmm. with all that oil money. Yeah, but twenty, but twenty one uh, commits class for money this, 21, com- 21 commits for this class, averaging ninety four point three three per recruit. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, top five class is all you can ask for. Exactly, yeah. Um, especially, you know, era of the transfer portal and all that stuff, right? But it's true. Uh, it's you, Bringing the class in is just step one. Keeping the class. Keeping the class is a whole other thing. Developing yeah. the class has always been a thing. Always been a yeah. thing, actually, developing the class now, of course, now keeping the class is, of course, almost as important as, as bringing the class in. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else on the recruiting front you want to talk about, Kyle? No, not not really. Uh, I anticipate the transfer portal to be hot and heavy. I just saw a couple of players from Alabama transferring out. So it's I, it's still really early for to see how 2022 season is going to shape up. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ohio state pursue another linebacker. Um, I'm just going to toss a name out there. Uh, I have not been following it real closely, so I could be completely off base here. Um, Mm -hmm. But I do want to throw a name out there to, to keep an eye on. Um, Let's see. Where did I write that down? While you're looking that up, I'll, I'll just say um, um, best of luck in recovery for Jamison Williams, who had that yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, non-contact injury. I came back as a tore ACL. Uh, hopefully, he, hopefully his surgery goes well and he can um, do well to, to be drafted high in the NFL draft. So best, best of luck for him. For sure. Um, did you find the name yet, Jared? I did. I just wanted to to, to look real quick and make sure he didn't uh, already transfer somewhere before I... No, uh, apparently he is not. Uh, Central Michigan. Kyle, how often do you go to the... How often do you go to the transfer portal and, 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 and sort by Mac? 203, 203 career tackles, 
29 of them for a loss, five and a half sacks, five interceptions, 17 pass breakups, three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries. He's in the transfer portal. He's from Central Michigan. His name is Troy Brown. I think Ohio State would love to love would love to add another linebacker. Do I know anything? No. I don't even know if Ohio State's interested. I don't even know if he's interested in Ohio State. I know nothing. But uh, it's just maybe, 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 uh, maybe a person to keep an eye on. Because even if he doesn't come to Ohio State, he might end up playing somewhere else in the Big Ten. Because you know, Mac, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, class of 2017 originally, uh, he will, uh, he almost certainly only has one year of eligibility left. All right, Kyle, that's, that's it for, for this episode. Uh, everyone come join our discord server. Come join the discord server. We hang out, we have fun, uh, shenanigans happen. Yeah, of, of of course, Gangland. That's you know, I just didn't feel like doing the math, and I can't track, I can't, I can't track anyone's eligibility right now. I just, I can't do it. I see guys enter the transfer portal, and I'm like, didn't he graduate two years ago? The 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 weird ass 2022, or excuse me, just the the, the weird ass 2020 year has me totally thrown off as to who has how many years left. I can't, I can't follow it right now. Uh, so yeah, come join a discord server and we'll talk about it. We'll we'll talk about how much we can't follow who's eligible for what and, and all of that. So, uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner or was your um, Jameson William thing? Your, your thing. Well, an interesting numbers here. Cause I, I'm a numbers guy here. So game that nobody really watched, <laughs> um, Monday night. Um, well, I mean, Technically, there was people, but not that many people compared to past uh, championships. Okay, games. technically, someone watched. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, when or Monday night's game gets uh, Georgia and Alabama, twenty-two point six million viewership. Twenty-two point six. Thanks for that edit, Stuart. Twenty-two point six million. The next lowest would be uh, in 2018 with 25 and a half million. So about 3 million less viewers than the uh, championship game. But none of these games come even close to the first year with Ohio State and Oregon, which that was at 34.6 million views. No one's Buckeyes even close dials. to that. Buckeyes yeah. move dials. Well, not just that, but you look at other games too in previous. So if you look at... <clears throat> Even look at um, even Oregon, really Oregon viewers bring in. I mean, there's a lot of people who watch Oregon too. Like if you look at um, the BCS championship game back in 2011, when Oregon played at Auburn, that was almost 28 million viewers there too. And then obviously the um, Oregon and Florida State um, um semifinal was a lot of viewers too it's you put Ohio State and Oregon together you, you're going to get a lot of viewers Oregon has a has a way of especially like that era of Oregon had a way of like capturing casuals mm -hmm. the, just the flashiness the speed the uniforms and all of that I really they Oregon have really like I said really found a way to like capture the interest of the casual fan All right, Kyle, that's it. That's that's the end of today's show. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a female-led band from the Columbus, Ohio area. They are called Betsy Ross, so stay tuned for that. If you're uh, listening to the audio version, if you're listening to the podcast version, uh, there's a link down in the bottom. You just click on that link, and then you can listen to the song that way. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. This is Betsy Ross.